Today, we're going to have a look at Maria the Board Game. Maria is a game based on the Austrian War of Succession 1740 to 1748 with Maria Theresa of Austria and Frederick of Prussia being two of the major roles in the game. Now Maria is predominantly a three player game. There are rules for a two player variant but this review is based only on three player games. The goal of Maria is to conquer enemy fortresses on the board. A fortress space looks like this one here. All you basically have to do to conquer a fortress is move across it like so with a general piece. Then you mark it with a fortress token from your pool of tokens to indicate that it is now conquered and under your control. However, there are circumstances that make conquering a fortress difficult, such as if an enemy general is close by. When a player empties their fortress token pool by conquering fortresses, they win. But trust me, I've made it sound much simpler than it actually is. Each player in the game will control several generals on the board. These generals will have a number of troops allocated to them and this will be kept track of on a roster. The number of troops allocated to them will fluctuate as they take losses as a result of battles and receive reinforcements, which can happen at various points throughout the game. Generals typically move around 3 to 8 city spaces per turn, moving along the lined roads joining the city spaces on the board. Important to generals are supply trains. These are the cubes. They move like generals, however they can't move as far each turn. When a general is out of his home region, he'll want to be close by one of these supply trains or he may suffer casualties, and supply trains can be attacked by your enemies. A battle in Maria occurs when two enemy generals end their move adjacent to one another. To resolve the battle, they use tactic cards. These cards are much like a standard deck of cards with a few exceptions, but they are suited, spades, hearts, clubs and diamonds. The board as you can see is divided into a grid and each sector of this grid indicates what suit of tactic cards will be used during battle. This battle here is in the heart sector so all cards played for the battle here must be of the heart suit. Each player will begin the game with a hand of tactic cards and they'll get more as the game progresses. So as you can imagine if you had a hand that was low on heart cards to begin with you'd probably try and avoid being near the heart sectors. A battle is fought in the following manner. Each general announces the number of troops they have, looking at their rosters. Austria he has 5 and Prussia 7. This means Austria will play a card first to boost her total. She plays a 4 hearts card. This takes her total to 9 versus Prussia's current 7. Prussia then plays a card in return, a 6 of hearts, taking his total to 13. Now the battle will go back and forth like this with players playing heart cards until a general cannot play appropriate cards or more likely refuses to for tactical reasons and loses the battle. The defeated general, which is the one with the lower total, will then lose some troops and be retreated in a direction chosen by the victor. I won't delve too deep into battles, but choosing when to accept defeat and by how much is critical. Bluffing with the cards is important. If you reveal to your opponents that you're low on hearts cards for example, they can use this to their advantage. Let's have a quick look at one of the key factors that makes Maria such a unique and enjoyable game. When playing the game, there are three players. Maria, aka Austria, Frederick, aka Prussia, and Louis XV, which is France. Those are the three major powers in the game. However, each player except Austria controls more than just one army. So there is Austria, controlled by the Maria player, France and Bavaria, controlled by the Louis player, and the Pragmatic Army, Prussia and Saxony who are controlled by Frederick. Now here is the wonderful part. France, Bavaria, Prussia and Saxony are all allied. They won't attack each other during the game, they only go after Austria. So that leaves the Pragmatic Army and Austria and they are allies against all the other powers. But wait I hear you thinking, that means that the Frederick player is fighting against Austria with Prussia and Saxony but is allied with Austria with the pragmatic army that he controls. That's right, the Frederick player's role in the rulebook is described as being schizophrenic. When he takes his turns with Prussia and Saxony he'll be Austria's enemy, when he takes his turn with the pragmatic army he is Austria's ally. Now if you're confused about how a schizophrenic role could possibly work well in a game, I'd like to quote from the rulebook, as after describing Prussia's role, it states, but don't worry, it all works. And trust me, it really works a treat and it creates some truly intriguing decisions for all the players involved. 
Okay, so there is much more to the game than I've showed you here today, including a political board, which I'm yet to mention, where players can use tactical cards to essentially bid for political favours, so aside from battles, these cards have other uses. Now, Maria is one of my all-time favourite games, so much so that I've avoided reviewing it, knowing that I could never do it justice. The decisions created during play, while seeming fairly straightforward after a short video like this, are not. The schizophrenic role of Prussia for all players creates some very interesting moments, and especially negotiations where thinking a little outside the square will make all the difference. The battle system is not only a fun and exciting way to resolve battles, but very elegant with more decisions and options than you may initially think. Things like what card to play, and when to play it, and if whether a battle is truly worth exhausting an excess of cards in, or whether it's better to just bug out and attempt to minimise your losses. And remember, a player with a large hand of cards is intimidating in this game. A player with a small hand of cards is a target. The battle system is nothing short of fantastic. The suited sectors on the board introduce tactical decisions as well, such as what angle to strike from, as it is possible for you to be in a diamonds region playing diamond cards, while your enemy is in a hearts region playing hearts cards. So being weak in one suit doesn't always mean you can't get the upper hand. Obviously, hand management is a very important aspect in Maria. The three roles in the game are very much asymmetrical, but from my experience, very balanced. The game does have a longer playtime, between 3-5 to five hours, but unlike other games with similar playtimes, I am not left feeling exhausted afterwards. It keeps me interested and on edge until the very end. Maria, in my opinion, is one of the best examples of game design and development. A pin-up game, if you will, for streamlined play. Maria, it's a game highly rated on Board Game Geek, but one that I feel is still underrated.